This new NAS has five hard drive bays, three SSD slots, a PCIe slot so you can expand it however the heck you want. Plus, there's a powerful AMD Ryzen AI processor that can do things like take your data and actually generate insights. What's more, this even has ECC memory. So if you want that feature, you got it in this. Guys, we have so much to go over in this NAS, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Minis Forum N5 Pro AI NAS. Turns out that this thing is absolutely crazy. Not only is there a lot of stuff that I think would be familiar, especially if you've seen the Minis Forum MS-01, A1, and A2 systems, but there's also a new layer on that because we have spaces for hard drives and a fit and finish that I frankly wasn't expecting. Now, I know a lot of folks are going to want to put their own NAS operating system on here, but when Minis Forum said they had their own, quite frankly, just shocked because it's probably to the level of like, you know, some of the other NAS units that we've seen from vendors that have been making NASs for many years. Now, I just want to say thank you real quick. You know, Minis Forum sent me a note and they said, hey, do you want to go look at this thing? So they sent this unit over. So I want to say thank you for that. But on the other hand, we had to go buy a ton of stuff to actually make this review happen. For example, we had to go buy a bunch of hard drives. And for that, we used the STH YouTube member sponsorships. So if you want to go and support our channel so we can go buy things to put in this, you can go join it down below. Thank you to everyone who already supports us. With that, let's get to the hardware because I know you guys are dying to see what this thing looks like. So the majority of this chassis, really this entire top part is really designed for the five SATA three and a half inch hard drive base. The hard drives are actually pretty easy. There's a little clicking latching mechanism and then you got to pull a little bit. And then once you do, you'll see that we have our drive inside. Now these are the Seagate Barracuda 28 terabyte drives that we featured on the main site because they're hammer drives and we managed to shuck them out of external enclosures which makes them a lot less expensive than going and buying these drives just normally. We will, of course, link you to the STH main site article where you can go find these. Now, this is the drivetrain. Something you'll notice is that there are little like rubber grommets here. So from a vibration standpoint, that is something that the Minis Forum folks thought of. You align the screws so that way they line up with these little holes. And then instead of actually putting screws in each hole, you put these nice little traits and we've seen these little rails to give you a toolless design, but you put them on each side and it's reminiscent of some of the easier NAS models that we've seen. So I actually think that this is at least for a drive tray design for a first gen product, like this is really good. One other small feature that we're not going to show you, but we're just going to show you where it is. Uh, if you do want to put two and a half inch drives such as SATA SSDs, there are these little mounting holes on the bottom here. So you'll be able to take a SATA SSD, put it in place here. The SATA connectors are designed to line up in the same spot. But let me just show you a little tiny fit and finish thing that I wasn't expecting in a first gen product like this. This is the tiny little cover to our hard drives. Now, instead of being snapping in place or something like that with plastic, it's instead, I mean, it is a plastic thing, but this is a magnetic cover. So you just plop it on here and I'll just kind of put this back on so you can see, boom, it just clicks in place. That's super nice. Now, one thing that you do generally want to see when you have NAS units is a locking feature. That locking feature makes sure that you don't get somebody that inadvertently or you know purposely wants to go and pull out a hard drive. That's something that a lot of times you'll see these NAS units actually have a lock just for that purpose. This does not have that locking feature. Oh, and on the front, we get a USB 4 Type-C port, and then we also get a Type-A USB 3 port. Okay, now looking inside the chassis from this side, you'll see a couple things that are really interesting. First off, there's a little SATA hot swap backplane here, and it's relatively small. What that allows is for more airflow to go through the drives and through the back of the chassis. Now, in the back of the chassis, we have two fans, and those two fans are important because they are relatively large, and overall, this unit is not super loud when it's in operation. Overall, this design for airflow is one of the better ones that we've seen in the industry. But if you look down under the drives, you can probably see that there's a compute node under here, and that's where a lot of the magic happens. So let's get around to the back of the system, and we'll be able to talk a little bit more about the I.O. that we get on this. Now in the back of the system, we have a Kensington lock port and then a USB 4 port. We also have an HDMI port and then an Oculink port. So if you do want to go and install a PCIe device with an Oculink dock, you have the option to do that with this. Then there's a USB 3 port. 
followed by two RJ45 ports. Now we get here a 10 gig and a five gig port. Then we also have a USB 2 port. Now at the bottom, we have a vent and we also have a low profile PCIe card slot. That low profile PCIe card slot is so important because so long as the card is able to be cooled by the system, so it actually helps a lot if you have an actively cooled card, you can go add things such as a low power GPU. You could add a storage controller. So if you wanna have an external storage controller, that's something you can do. And you could also put something in there like a NIC, which is actually what we ended up doing, putting a dual port 25 gig NIC with a fan. Okay, now it's time to get inside the system and let's take a look at the compute node because that's where a lot of this magic happens. So what you do is you flip this system over and then there are two screws. We already have them out, but there are two screws on the bottom here. And then the next step is that you pull the compute module out. Okay, so for this, we have two sides. We have one side, which we currently have our two and a half inch NVMe SSDs installed in. We'll show you this in a little bit more detail in a sec. But what I really wanna do is get to the other side real quickly, and I wanna show you how the system is very different from others on the market. So how the side is laid out is very similar to the MS-01, A1, A2, all those, where you have your CPU here, you have a blower fan, you take off using these three screws, and then here you have two DDR5 SO DIMM slots. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about the CPU. Now this is an AMD, Ryzen AI 9 HX Pro 370, which means that we get ECC memory support. And so you'll see that our system right now is configured with only 32 gigabytes and two 16 gigabyte DIMMs. However, there is an option to add two 48 gigabyte DIMMs for a total of 96 gigabytes of memory, which is a lot, especially for a five bay NAS. Now this processor uses Zen 5, but it has four cores of Zen 5 and eight cores of Zen 5C, giving it a total of 12 cores. And of course, because it's an AMD processor, that means we have 12 cores, but also 24 threads. By the way, Zen 5, even Zen 5C in a NAS, is a pretty darn good architecture. Now, the other interesting thing about this is that because this is a strikes point system, what you'll see is that this doesn't just have CPU cores. Instead, we also have a pretty good GPU with the AMD Radeon 890M graphics. Now the AMD 890M graphics is something that we've seen in other mini PCs with the non-pro version of this processor. And frankly, it's good enough that you can play games. I mean, you could actually go and you know install Windows or whatever on this and play games on this NAS, no problem. And that's something that most NAS units don't have. The important thing there is that you do get a couple of features that are, I guess, awesome for a NAS. Those include things like the video encoders and decoders that you get with that higher end GPU solution. And then you also get something because it's a big AMD APU, you also get an NPU. So you have an additional bit of AI capability because not only do you have the CPU and GPU, but you also have an NPU that's built into this. And in case you're wondering that NPU is a 50 tops NPU, so it's pretty capable, especially for this generation. And the reason these AI capabilities are important is because a lot more of the NAS software these days is starting to do things like take data and actually do analytics on it. So for example, if you like that idea of being able to go and search your photos, well, that would be something that, you know, with the newer generations of the software platforms, you're starting to use these NPUs and the GPUs to be able to go and take photos, footage, all that kind of stuff and actually bring insights out of it. So one of the coolest things about having this whole system is having the PCIe Gen 4 slot, because if you wanna go and add something like a higher speed NIC, or you wanna add maybe an external storage controller and you know connect more drives or something like that, you have a PCIe slot that as long as you have a low profile card, you can just go put that card in here and get that external connectivity, which I think is awesome. But also means that if you wanted to go put something like a low power NVIDIA single slot GPU in there for an NVIDIA accelerated AI application, you could go do that because you have the slot available. Now, let's talk about the other side. One of the features that makes this so easy to service is this little connector right here. This little connector provides our connectivity to our hard drives. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be like, so what, who cares about that? Well, let me just tell you, if you've ever gone and had to go and service some NAS units that are a pain to get to, this makes a lot of sense. And it's not something you would necessarily think that a you know initial like first gen in this type of series effort would produce, right? So it's actually just kind of shows that they're thinking about things that I don't even think you would think of your first time you would build a NAS. Now, what am I not so favorite parts of this is just getting in here and getting through all the screws that it requires to get to the SSD side. 
but there's a lot of features here. So I think it's worth kind of diving into this and just kind of showing you what's going on. So we open this up here using three screws. You'll see that we have a fan here. And by the way, this is an important fan because it keeps SSDs and other components cool in the bottom part of the system. Now, when we originally got the system is configured with a small M.2, I think that's a 2230 SSD. And that's a small SSD really designed for boot applications. Beyond that, there are two M.2 slots that are really there for data stored. Now, if you just want to go and put M.2 SSDs in there, like you, know, you have some two or four terabyte drives, maybe even eight terabyte drives, you could totally go and just use it as is. But what I think a lot of folks will want to do is actually use this expansion board. And when you use this expansion board, you get access to larger format SSDs. Now, the bummer on this is that these are only seven millimeter U.2 SSDs. So you're not going to be able to put like a, you know, 122 or larger terabyte drive that's, you know, U.2 15 millimeter drive because it just simply won't fit. On the other side, though, at least you can use these larger drives and these larger drives often have power loss protection built in. So if there's a sudden loss of power, you'll know that the drives have capacitors and are able to dump the data that they need to in enough time uh, you know, after that power failure. But what you'll see is that as you install this board to be able to put these U.2 SSDs in there, you also have to take off the boot SSD, which you can see is occupying our little slot down here. So you have to move all the drives. Now, something else that's interesting is that M.2 and U.2 actually have different electrical inputs and so they need different kinds of power and so on the ms01 there was a little switch that was like you know do you have an m.2 drive or a u.2 drive and if you selected the wrong one the drives would get the wrong power how minis form is solving that instead here is that they actually have an auxiliary power connector on this side and this allows you to get the right power to the u.2 drives as needed another small feature that i think a lot of folks will just miss is the fact that there is an internal USB type A port and that's right here in the system. Now, the importance of that is that a lot of people will go and install operating systems from a USB drive. This used to be super popular back in the day, guys. It has definitely fallen out of favor in terms of having either license keys or USB drives for a lot of different applications. All told though, I have to say, I was thoroughly impressed by this. And so I really like the idea that these guys are building an expandable system around some of the things that they've done previously because it just kind of lets them iterate, I think, a little bit faster. Okay, so really quickly, let's talk about the Minis Cloud software solution on like how you set this up and like what the pre-installed software is on here. So one of the strange things with this system is what happens when you plug it in right? You plug it in and you may hook up an HDMI cable or something. And then all of a sudden you're going to go and you're going to see some video. It'll say minis form. And then the screen just goes black. And so at that point, you're probably thinking, well, Hey, I know this comes pre-installed with this minis cloud platform for a NAS OS. And so that's one of those things that I can just go quickly to the IP address and just put HTTPS or HTTP in there and, and I'll get to a website that'll have my operating system and or my, my management interface, right? And the answer is absolutely not. Instead, and this is kind of one of the like unfortunate parts about this, right? Is that you have to go to the Minis Forum site, you go to support and you have to install an app. Now they have apps for different operating systems and what have you, but like we went to go install the one for Windows and we got a Windows like smart screen or Defender uh, pop-up on the download saying like, hey, this isn't a common file. Do you really want to even install this? And like one of the things that doesn't instill a ton of confidence when you have a brand new NAS and you're so excited to go set the system up is that you need a piece of software that Microsoft is flagging as a non-common piece of software. So like to me, like that thing just starts out as a not great user experience. Now, an advantage that we have is that we have some test Dell systems that are going to go back to Dell after. So I don't really mind going and putting some random software on there. And so that's exactly what we did. The overall setup process was really not that hard, but it was also kind of weird. There's a whole bunch of steps where you have to go and install the application and then it has to update, even though you just like downloaded one from the website. So that was kind of weird. And then once you get it all set up, then you connect to the NAS and it finds it on the network. Cool. But you also have to do things like make a, you have to register like, why, why do you want to, I don't want to give my email address to the NAS to have something that's hosted locally. Like that just doesn't really work for me. Uh, another weird thing was that I tried setting the time zone to either like Phoenix or California and that didn't work, even though uh, I really don't know why. I had it on English, I had it Western US and uh, still wouldn't let me do that. But one of the cool things is that once you get it set up, it's quite easy actually to get set up with a storage array and get all the shares online and stuff like that, at least the basics, right? And so for example, in here, we have the Seagate 28 terabyte drives that we shut. Uh, they worked no problem in here. You just plugged them in, 
easy peasy. Now, the other awesome thing about this is that it has a number of applications that you can install. And one of the cool things that we did was we installed Open Web UI with the AMD version, which used Rockham. And within a few minutes, we were here running DeepSeq R1, a small 1.5 billion parameter model, but running it on here actually pretty darn fast. So not necessarily the best model, but something that was working out of the box and took mere minutes to set up. But aside from being able to run AI models here, some of the other features that you have with this setup is the ability to do like, they have like a photo app that will do face detection and like categorize things. So I guess the question is, did it work? And the answer is yes. Was it perfect though? I think the answer is no, and it's probably not something that at this point I would wanna run myself. But no matter which operating system we used, when we used these 28 terabyte drives, we were getting about 600 megabytes per second transfers on our 10 gig port. But it's also not too far off from what you would expect from just doing sequential transfers on a RAID Z2 on an array like this, right? So to me, good performance. In terms of power consumption, we have the system idling right now, and it's somewhere in the 45 to maybe 49 watt range but in terms of noise, in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, we're at about 39, maybe 41 dBA, somewhere in there. So we are very low in terms of both our power consumption and our noise. Now, I should mention that 45 to 49 watts is with five 28 terabyte Seagate drives, plus we have the system set up, but we don't have extra SSDs. We only have the OS SSD in here. We don't have anything in the card slots or anything like that. In a NAS configuration, probably the top you're gonna hit is probably about 120 watts. I think that 45 to 120 watt range is probably good for most NAS applications. Now, by now, if you've seen our videos, you know that I like to have key lessons learned. I mean, what did we learn from this system? First off, I think that the choice of the AMD Ryzen AI Pro processor is awesome. The ECC memory support, the 12 Zen 5 cores, but then also having the NPU just gives you so much future proofing. I don't know if future proofing is the right word, but at least it gives you a much more modern feature set. Now, I think on the networking side, there are folks that are definitely gonna want a SFP plus based solution, or they're just gonna want, frankly, a lot more in terms of networking. And I think that's where this gets really interesting, right? Having 10 gig and five gig is good. But on the other hand, if you want 10 gig, maybe you don't really want 10 gig anymore. Maybe you want 25 gig. And that's really where that PCIe slot comes in. And the fact that you have an Oculink port, plus you have USB 4, gives you even more expandability and customization options. Having the internal SSD options to have either M.2 or U.2, I think it's just that extra little bit of usefulness. Software wise, it's an interesting one, right? Because on one hand, I know Minisform is gonna push their own Minisform NAS OS. And I think that that's good. On the other hand, I'm probably a little bit more conservative and I also run Proxmox on everything. So I think that for me, I would use a different operating system than the minis form today. But having used it, I mean, there are a lot of folks that are gonna you know, use that all over the world, right? Number one. And number two, um, I was just shocked with how good it is. Something that I think just to keep in mind is that maybe you're getting the system today, but hopefully you get updates on the NAS operating system in the future, which I think would be good. But that brings me to the final point that I think a lot of folks bring out whenever we do these reviews. And that's just the warranty and support, right? The fact of the matter is that there are other companies out there like the QNAP, Synologies, et cetera, of the world that do have more, I guess, robust or more well-known support processes. Some folks have had problems with those too, I know. But on the other hand, I think for the minis forums folks, one of the things that I just kept thinking was, you know, if you're gonna sell this NAS as a high-end unit with all of these great features, then there are a lot of folks that are gonna wanna buy this NAS that are gonna also wanna have really good support. So I think that minis forums, you know, one thing that they can do with a system like this is really create a good reputation for support. Have an easy way, if somebody has an issue, to go and solve those issues. Have a, you know, fast way to get support, get BIOS updates, firmware updates, all those things that you might want, especially since folks are so freaked out about the security around network storage. I just think that that's super important in the industry. Wow, and this was just such a cool system. I'd love to hear what you guys think though, so definitely let me know down in the comments. And if you did like this video, wait, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.